First and goal from the three as we open the second quarter. Goff back, looking, throwing, middle end zone. It is caught. Touchdown, Detroit Lions. Welcome to the Twin the Huddle podcast. Brad Galley, uh, Channel 7 Sports Director. Tight end for the uh, Bloomfield Hill <laughs> Brother Rice uh, Warriors back in the day. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, everybody knows Brad. And I'm, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Thanks for uh, having me. Yeah, no. Week 14. Is, is that wild? Isn't that crazy? Yeah. There's five games left. It's we just cold. had Thanksgiving. It's cold. It's snowy. But it's so different. Can I tell you, when we won the state championship, uh, at Brother Rice in 2005, I went to job shadow somebody. It was not a good time for the Lions at that point. Steve Merritt, you got fired. I was job shadowing Matt Shepard at his radio job and was in this studio. He goes, I can't, I don't have time to take you home. I have to go to a press conference. Are you serious? So as a high school kid, on a day off after we won the state championship, I was in here and sat through Matt Millen talking about firing Steve Mariucci. Wow, times have changed. Times have changed. Now you're talking about 11-1 team, the number one seed, the best team, that, that word that... Isn't always been muttered around here, but no. Super Bowl? Like, I, it's been muttered around here? I mean, that's been a, a, a quite the change in 20 years, huh? Beyond realistic. <laughs> the expectation now for this group, yeah. which is wild. Well, Brad joins me for the three key segment that we do every week, and let's just jump right into it. Let, let's jump into a big one. I think this week is, is just the run game importance for Detroit. And, and I say that, Brad, because you look at Green Bay the last few weeks. They've been playing much better football. They won five, lost to Detroit, and have won three. And in the last two games and wins over San Francisco and Miami, those two teams have a combined 80 three rushing yards like they have really committed to that defensively and on the flip side you know what Detroit wants to do going yeah. into that game so that's just to me that's such an important one but it really is every week isn't it it is and I think whether or not they have to run the ball each week um, it does it hasn't been the recipe for success because they have so many other options but I really think this week it'll be what Ben Johnson and what Dan Campbell want to do for so many different reasons. One, I think time of possession is going to be a huge thing. They are so beaten up on the defensive side of the ball, which has been well documented. They're going to want to hold that ball for a long time, and it's something they really didn't do against Chicago a ton, and they didn't do in the second half against Green Bay. You've written about it a bunch. Green Bay, the quotes coming out of of that room this week, we feel like we played Detroit really, really well, which is really strange. Because they lost and it was lopsided for almost the entire game until the last back half of it. But they feel really good about how they played against the Lions in that first game. Yeah, they, they think it was just mistakes. It was self-inflicted things, little things that they did to get off the field, um, not running the football, staying with it when they thought they should have probably a little bit longer too. But when you look at this Lions team, to me, it's everything's predicated on that. I mean, they average 154 yards on the ground. Um, they average 4.8 yards per carry. Jared Goff is the number one play action quarterback in the league. So like to me, everything they do has has to be about that first and we haven't seen them struggle to run it right and so I wonder what that would look like now they like to your point they can go ahead and throw it 50 times a game they, they've shown us that before but that's not what they want to do that's no, not the recipe for success the struggle, for them no it's not and the struggles have come on first down too that's what I kind of pinpointed the last few games and even against Green Bay a lot of one yard runs on first down a lot of incompletions against Chicago that really stalled drives um and it's so corny and so cliche to say it, but what you do on first down, especially this team in the offense, really predicate like it, it, it dictates what they're going to do on the drives. And we've seen so many times this season just them blowing teams out because on first down, hey, we're going to run the ball right up your throat and yeah. we're going to go for six, seven yards. And they haven't done that against some of the tougher teams in the league, which I think makes us go, what's really going to happen this weekend? And what I love too is the runs on third and six. Third and oh. seven, third and eight. Like as a football guy, it's great. I love to see a team just say, "We're more physical than you." We th- third and seven for thirty teams out there. That's a, a run. Maybe Baltimore with Henry would decide to do it. Maybe Philly too. But that's their mentality. That's just what they are. And so I think it's so important in a game like this. You talked about the injuries on defense, the time of possession. To me, I think this is just a game. You go in here and be like. Let's be more physical than them. This is our house. We're trying to get to 12 wins. We're the number one seed. This is what we do. Let Sonic and Knuckles eat. You've had a lot of national voices on on your podcast over the years. You've interviewed them at camp throughout um, the last few years. I just love that the narrative about this team has become 
the household narrative for people across the country. It's like the, the, the foam at the top of the drink that everybody knows, okay, third down, they're going to run the ball because they're probably going to go to four down territory here. This team's going to run the ball like crazy. And everybody now knows this team's identity. Every defense knows the identity, and they're winning with it. And I think they'll do it again on Thursday night. All right. Second big key for me, and, and look, you mentioned it, it, is some of the injuries that they're dealing with now defensively. You look at some of the additions that they've made this week. Quan Alexander, uh, Miles Adams, uh, Jonah Williams, Jamal Adams, um, you, know, you know, guys that you know have played a lot of football in this league, and, and I think that's going to benefit Detroit. But th- it, there's still some time – Brad, with with trying to figure out how they fit, what they do best, it's tough to do in three days. Yeah. But they're going to need some of those guys, yeah, to step in and, and play reserve roles. And if this team suffers any more injuries, those roles might have to be significantly bigger. It's a, it's a tough spot to be week fourteen. Can Jack Campbell clone himself? Because right now he's the <laughs> longest tenured man in the linebacker room, which is crazy. Isn't and on D line, I talk about household names. Very few, if any. I mean, aside from Aline McNeil and DJ Reader. DJ Reader got a game ball last week. That yeah. should not be underestimated. I think that was because of his performance, but I also think because Dan Campbell recognizes how important he was to that room. But he also said about Muhammad, I mean, that, that guy's story, to be drafted in 17, to be kind of a journeyman, and I love the fact that he was with Dallas this offseason. I love that he was with them in August, and they just go, not good <laughs> not enough, good we're going to move along. And what a year they've had, and he's come in and been such a contributor. Uh, you know, Dan said it after the Chicago win. He was all over the field making different plays. You talk about the linebackers, the defensive line. The time to step up is few and far between. There's not a lot of time to do it. So you've already seen guys step up. David Long's made plays. What Aaron Gled sent to us this week was so indicative of what this team believes. It's not necessarily about the scheme. It's about the style of play. Yeah, it's beautiful. I love that. I included that in my 10 takeaways from that, and it was the number one takeaway. So we are on the same page here because I loved that too. It's a style, not the scheme. And they, they, they go after guys. That, that play that style as well. And, you know, I, one thing I, I, when, I, when we talk about the injuries and we think about the injuries, and obviously they're concerning, and there's a lot of them that list is long. But when I look at this game and I see Zadarius Smith, Aleem McNeil, DJ Reader up front, Jack Campbell at the mic, it, it there's a chance we get Carlton Davis back. He, you know, he practiced this week and, and he could play. Terry and Arnold, Brian Branch, Amik Robertson. Kirby Joseph, those guys have been there all year. They've played a lot of Very football. True. I think it's it's more the depth that we're talking about, and, and, and that's been kind of the issue. But, I mean, they're going into this game with eight, nine primary starters on defense. They've got their defense. Yeah. They just, they you know, they love to run those defensive linemen and rotate guys, and that's going to be part of the issue. But when people are like, this defense is so depleted, I don't know if they can win – They've got a lot of guys that still, and when you got those three guys up front, that secondary, and your Mike linebacker, you're in pretty good shape. But they just can't afford any more, right? And, and it's that depth you know, that starts to get tested. How many times have we said that, though? They can't afford any more injuries, and they just keep proving <laughs> it. But to your point, I mean, Brad Holmes finds people that fit this defense and gets input from Aaron Glenn, from Dan Campbell, no doubt about it. They know what they're looking for. We all waited and waited and waited. Dan, are you going to make a trade? Uh, when are you guys making the trade? We'll find the guy that fits us right. We don't want to go get a piece last year that didn't fit necessarily right, which we all could look back and revision his history and say, maybe they should have anyways. But Brad Holmes is, again, making a case to be executive of the year because he keeps finding people. And boy, does Zadarius Smith look like the right fit. Yeah. I mean, he has made an instant impact. He's got the fire. Um, the celebrations are just so fun. He just he looks like a Detroit Lion, and he's a player the Packers know, right? I mean, Matt Lafleur already talked about just the, the dynamic player that he is, the playmaking ability that he has shown with Detroit. So depth is something this organization has built so incredibly strong under Brad Holmes, and they continue to prove it. To your point, though, I, I mean, they have a lot of their starters. Yeah, they are stars. They got they've game. got plenty of ammo to, to to go into this game. And look, it's a Packers team that's that's playing much better football. You know, I, I, Aaron mentioned this too. They've kind of changed their philosophy a little bit. Jordan Love was was you know throwing the ball a lot to begin the season. Was throwing a lot of interceptions. Mm-hmm. They've kind of made Josh uh, Jacobs that 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 focus there. And it's a run first. It's a more physical football team, which I think matches up better with what Detroit wants to yeah. bring to the table. And they can play action off it. They've got those young receivers. So I, you know that philosophy is obviously very much similar to what Detroit's is. They're they're playing very well. They've scored thirty plus points their last two games. Love was a little injured week nine in that first game. He's going to be more mobile now. His ability to get out of the pocket. I think this is going to be a great test, and that 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 depth is certainly going to be tested for the Lions. But the starters are there, and we've seen it. 
they've been able to get the most out of a lot of these guys that they have come and play. If there are naysayers about the Lions right now, it's can they survive the injuries? And I mean, they just blew out a lot of bad teams. If you want to nays- have you know some bad things to say about the Packers, they've gone through a stretch of, of games against teams that we thought early on would be contenders that have ultimately fizzled out. So it's it's I don't want to say it's a lot of the same questions, but at least with the schedule, it's kind of a similar point to see who this team really is against another really good team. And right now they're on a collision course, which should make for a great competition. And it should because it's such a big game in the division right now. This, this division is crazy. Yes. This conference is crazy. I mean, the AFC, I think they almost settled their playoffs Buffalo completely. completely. The division. Yeah, I mean, there is a lot more football to go, and these games are, are very important. All right, last um, key to, to Thursday, I, I think for me is when you've looked at this Detroit Lions often struggle a little bit. To me, it's been when they haven't been good in the red zone. We obviously know the numbers from Tampa, right? They were one for seven in the red zone, lost that game 2016. Last week, um, I thought they could have, I, I think, ended that game a lot earlier had they. Um, you know, been better in the red zone, not settle for field goals. They were two for five in the red zone with a red zone turnover right before the first half. That, to me, is where they've got to be better. And, and Ben Johnson even talked about it this week, didn't he? Yeah, and honestly, we said after that Tampa game, how are you going to fix your red zone issues? And it was almost like, you know, Dan doesn't stiff our muscle out from the podium, but it's almost, we got this. It, it, it's a one-off. <laughs> and and I think the Chicago thing, they, they shot themselves in the foot a few times. That's what Ben said ultimately. Yeah. I mean, that's a Jameer touchdown or at least le- that – he doesn't fumble and look where they're going to be. I mean, really close to it. Um, but again, for me, it goes back to success on first down, um, success on second down, because you don't want to continue to make yourself that team that it's third and seven. We'll be all right. We can just, you know, we're in four down territory anywhere we go. And in the red zone, you want to trust the leg of your kicker. But also, this is a, this is a league um, that's run on touchdowns. Yeah. And, and we saw Sam Laporta come back healthy, which is a huge thing for the red zone. Good point. Dan said he feels as good as he has. Um, which I think is huge for this team. So you, you, they fed him early. They fed him often, especially in the red zone. Um, but I think it comes down to just establishing that run early in the set of downs to then open up Sam, open up Amon Ra, who is like this freaky, tiny, speedy tight end in the red zone because people just can't seem to stop him. But early run success, I think, will really help them in the red zone. What we talked about with Green Bay, talk, and all the talk in Green Bay this week about, you know, we left a lot on the field and it was more us than them. I think yeah. the Detroit Lions would think about that in the red zone too or consider that you know it's more what yeah. we didn't do ben talked about some play calls jared talked about some not getting them into the right play i think those things can be panned out you look at green bay 21st in the red zone 59 percent um team score touchdowns in their 23 touchdowns 14 of those on the pass they give up red zone plays i expect this to be a week where detroit kind of fixes those red zone woes we've seen a couple times and they take advantage of those opportunities and I wouldn't be surprised at all if if this is more of a high scoring type game did your ears perk up when Ben was describing why he was frustrated with himself how could you be frustrated with yourself you're one of the (laughs) hottest names in all of football but he said they got to the line and you don't want to waste shots you only get about 55 to 60 of them a game and he goes this is not what we expected on defense this is not what we wanted on defense yeah and it's almost like okay we're going to try our best against yours and it didn't work out a lot against Chicago I think you can see the fire and the red in his eyes when things like that happen, as you just said, to take that challenge on the next week. Okay, that was an issue for us. Not going to be an issue this week. Yeah, and that's where it's nice to have a veteran quarterback like Jared Goff, too, Mm -hmm. that can get you into some of those plays. And more often than not, we've seen them be able to do that for the entire year, they're, they're top five red zone team. So, you know, but just when they've had close games, when they've lost, to me, that's been the issue that stood out. So y- you want to keep that on the positive side no, no. because that that's always been the recipe for success. When, them, when they've struggled there, they have tend to struggle. And so you don't certainly don't want to see that at home. And knock on wood, unless this is faux wood. I mean, it looks really nice. <laughs> Goff doesn't make silly mistakes in those critical He'll situations. He'll throw ground. I mean, I love the fact. I love it. We've never seen that in our lifetime. A Lions no. quarterback that intentionally just chucks it at people's feet just to say, Let, next play, let's go. Yep. I'd rather do that than make mistakes. And again, the Houston game, the five interceptions that people on the outside would want to say, well, that game was terrible. Maybe one of those was his fault. Yeah. Which we don't have to, I mean, we don't have to plow through that ground again. Yeah. He's a really smart quarterback, which again, to your point, certainly helps when a team is trying to fix the most important part of their offense in the red zone scoring touchdowns. All right. So run the football. Make do with those injuries on defense. Have guys step up and make plays and be good in the red zone. Those are three keys for this week. Listen, man, Amon Ross St. Brown gave you a shout-out in a scrum in the locker room last week. He listens to the podcast. If the team <laughs> listens to the podcast and they listen to these keys, we're walking away Thursday night covering another win. And if we walk away Thursday night covering another win, this team gets to 12-1. and one. 
stays atop the NFC. That's going to be it's it's going to be a fun last month. It, it, look, it's already fun. It's mm-hmm. great to be part of something like this. But boy, if they can keep this rolling, this city is going to just go unhinged. It's the great uniter. It's the great uniter. <laughs> the Lions are the great uniter. With everything in this world that's happening, with everything in this state between Michigan, Michigan State, I just love what this Lions team has done for this fan base. No matter what walk of life. This team is the great uniter, and they've given so many people so many reasons to smile. He is Brad Galley, the sports director at Channel 7. Where can people find you on X? Uh, at Brad Galley, at WXYZ Detroit. Try to be everywhere. Uh, usually that comment underneath your posts. Tim, that was so informative. Great stuff. So you can find me in Tim's comment section. Usually with no, we can up. find him. He gives you the, the, the breakdown on all of it. You do a great job Thanks, over man. there at 7. Appreciate you joining the podcast. Thanks for having me on. All right, man. Welcome back to the Detroit in the Huddle podcast. Very happy to welcome in Dan Skipper, left tackle for the Detroit Lions. How you doing, Dan? Doing great. How are you? I know I had you on in the off season. Um, I love having you on, and I love it particular because kind of the theme of this team right now, or what they're going through with some of the injuries and stuff, is is just guys being able to step up, fit in, contribute, and play. And I think you're a great example of that. You've been your whole career here. Um, just just talk about this team's ability to do that and, and, and get contributions from a ton of different guys that, that maybe you weren't expecting to at the beginning of the year, but they're playing big now. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, Coach Campbell talks a lot about holding the line. You yeah. know, you never know when it's going to be your turn to, to get up there, hold the line, whether that's a week, the rest of the season, um, a couple snaps, you know, but going in there, doing what you need to do, um, you know, and that guys are just, we've, we've been ready for it. We're used to it. Um, started, you know, in training camp and everything else with, you know, next man up all the time, you know, and, all right, hold the line, share the load. Um, you know, and the staff has done a great job of, uh, you know, putting guys in positions to do the things they can do. You know, I heard from a little birdie that you had a signing, a, a card signing in Livonia <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. And now you have re- your cult hero status is, is growing here because this little birdie also told me there were hundreds of people yeah, that was... lined up to do this. This <laughs> took hours to do. Just how much are you enjoying yourself with this fan base and just how they view you and guys like you and, and just your story and how yeah. they've embraced that? No, the, the fan base is awesome. I would say Kirby was there too, so I'm going to give a lot of that to him. No, um, no, but... I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, this fan base is awesome. You know, they, uh, you know, they, they rally behind the team. There's no one player. There's no, you know, one this, one that. It's it's you know the logo it's the group it's the city you know that's really what we're we're playing for you know it's not about you know what can I do yeah there's guys getting paid all over we love that for them but at the end of the day it's what can we do collectively can we pick up some slack um you know how can I hold up more weight you know of the load do you guys view that collectively as an offense too? Maybe I mean you guys Absolutely, have obviously yeah. dealt with injuries, but that side of the ball, the other side of the ball, and, and kudos to them and no the doubt. job Aaron yeah. Glenn has done for Absolutely. you know continuing to play at the level they are. But they've suffered some some oh, catastrophic yeah. injuries. Yeah. And and do you guys as an offense say, okay, look, now it's our turn? Absolutely. You know, like yeah. let's do this. Yeah, I mean, there's been games. You know, you go into it, you're banged up on offense, and you know it starts on you know the, the Wednesday meeting of hey. You know, defense it's going to be on you this week. You know, offense going to be on you. Special teams, hey, we got to we got to have a couple big plays. And you know, this week, you know, you're looking around the building a little bit, and you're like, all right, like it's no secret, it's on us this week. And you know, we need to shoulder more of that load. Special teams needs to as well. And you know, our defense, like we're never going to count them out. Right, I mean, that's that'd be absolutely Can't. insane. No, not you know, with the so, secondary that you guys got. Those absolutely. two interior guys. Yeah, the secondary, uh, yeah. and then you got guys getting a chance. Yeah, you know, right, and and never count that out either. You know, you don't know who you got until you're in there, and so you know, seeing Mo make that play, you know, making that sack last week, doing things like that, like you you don't know what you have till till they're there, and so. One of these, the next guys, we'll, we'll find out. How much know? do you love being a part of this offensive line? I mean, it's it, it's the heartbeat of the team. You mm-hmm. know, I mean, if everything you guys do offensively starts up front, you're a big part of that swing tackle. Now playing some left tackle too. Just just how much do you like being part of that group? It's an awesome group, um, you know. And we we spent so much time together. I um, mean, you know, you had had Big Kev in there, and you know, it's an awesome awesome room awesome feeling um you know you got lifelong friends and then oh yeah we're pretty good at football too right and so <laughs> you know but the the football thing seems to kind of take care of itself um you know we've got a bunch of high level players um 
on that on that starting five. And you know, like I said, the rest of us were just trying to hold the line, get better. You know, you can learn something from them every day. Um, you know, and just trying to trying to grow every day, get a little better every day. So that when you're called upon, it's you know you're ready to go. But you know, those guys are good players out there yeah we not get that twisted. <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, so but. What, what's the challenge um with with your role i mean at a minute's notice you're boom in mm-hmm. at left tackle then boom you're starting at left tackle something happens over on the right side boom you're you're there what what's the challenge of 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 kind of being that guy that just has to step in no matter what and and hold the line um you know the preparation side you don't know you know when you're the swing guy you don't know if it's going to be the you know play number one or Ooh, tweaked my back in warm-ups or you know so you're you're constantly preparing like you're going to start um you know but when you're when you're starting there's just more on game day so um you know the preparation is almost a little easier because you can really nail in on the details focus in you know more on individual rush plans you know specific sides things like that um you know because not every guy rushes the same over each side they don't play the run the same each way um you know, so you can you can hone in on that a little bit more, but um, you know, all eyes are on you. You know, you go out there and look like a fool. It's on you. So. All all eyes are on y- y- you this week at, at left tackle. Look, the best tackle in football is arguably on the other side of you. I think no we doubt. probably both agree yeah. with that. How much do you appreciate and and just the trust level that? Look, some guys would maybe say, look, let's put Penne over on the left. You know, whatever, whatever. They're like. No, we know what what Dex about. You know, excuse, mm-hmm. we know what Skip's about. Like he is tough as nails. He's going to do his job and he's going to fight to the end. That's what um, uh, Ben Johnson said this week. As an offensive lineman, you probably love a guy that talks about you fight till the end. I didn't hear that, so just, thanks, yeah. yeah, no, <laughs> thanks, but, but 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 just the, the level of confidence that they have that that you can just step in there and boom, we're going to do what we do. Nothing changes. Skip steps in there. You got to love that about about the yeah, the it's great these guys. And, yeah, and. You know, we're not gonna lie. You know, they've given me a lot of help. I get a lot of help from my friends. Um, you know, a lot of chips, bumps, nudges. You know, specific things in the run game that you know maybe maybe I'm a little better at, or you know, a little, you know, things tweak, things change a little bit. Um, but you know, having the confidence to, you know, hey, we didn't know if this is gonna be a one week thing, two week, however long. Um, you know, and just going out there and and giving it everything I got. And, and you're their guy. Yeah, you know, it, it means like, it's a pretty cool deal. Yeah, um, I can imagine. But, yeah, I mean, going out there and, like I said, just keep keep holding the line until that gets back, and hopefully we're not spending too much time looking at me on the big screen. Quick quick scouting report. Green Bay's playing a pretty good football right now, especially Absolutely. defensively. You look at the way they've stopped the run. I think they've allowed 83 rushing yards the last two games combined. Mm-hmm. A physical bunch up there. You've seen them before, but but it looks like they're playing a, maybe a little bit different brand of football. They're, they're healthy. Just what you see from them on tape, what – what can fans expect Thursday night? You know, I we'll see how the game each game plays out a little differently. Yeah. Um, can't tell you what we're planning on doing. I'm, no, no, yeah, no, 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 no secrets. <laughs> but maybe um, just just but the yeah, expectation. I mean, yeah, you know, no, these a guys physical kind of game. Is yeah, that what you're no, expecting? No, we that we brand? fully expect a bloodbath. You yeah, know, we're gonna go out there, give it everything we got. You know, they came in here last year at home. I think that was the Thanksgiving game. Yep. Was that Thanksgiving? Yep, it was. Yeah, and you know, took it to us. Um, yeah, I mean, they beat the tar out of us. So. You know, that's still fresh in our mind. Um, you know, we need to go out there, play our style of football, and, you know, if it's if it's a bloodbath, it's a bloodbath, and it's it's a, you know, a feeding frenzy on the on the secondary for, you know, whoever. It doesn't yeah. matter, you know. Um, then it'll be that kind of game too. So, you know, you never know quite how the game's going to go, but we're going to go out there and give it everything we got. And it's got to be fun being part of an offense that you know you can go into any game and, and play a different kind of game. You can mm-hmm. run it down people's throats and play that kind of game. Mm-hmm. Okay, you want to do that, but you want to put eight in the box? All right, we'll throw it on you. We can play that game, throw it 50 times and have success that way too. Mm-hmm. So you, it's got to be fun being part of an Absolutely. offense like that. Yeah, right? no, you can it, counter pretty much anything that this league does. Yeah, no, I mean, if it, if it turns into a bloodbath, it's a bloodbath. If it's track meet, it's track meet, and that's okay. You know, we got – Coach Johnson does a great job calling games, setting things up, doing different things, and hey, at the end of the day, we'll, he calls it, we haul it. Well, I love the fact that you've become a fan favorite here. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've done a great job as a swing guy. You've stepped in, and you've done a great job there. I think you've made yourself some money, and I appreciate you taking the time here to, to join it. the podcast. Thanks, Tim. Welcome back to the 20 Mill Huddle Podcast. I'm very happy to welcome Al Quadin Muhammad, a new defensive end to the Detroit Lions. And look, I had Dan Skipper on Al Quadin, and 
I, I wanted to have you on too because so much of this story over the last you know month, couple of months has been guys stepping up and and taking on bigger roles and contributing. You've been a huge part of that. Skip's been a huge part of that. A lot of guys have been a huge part of that. Can you just talk about the mentality of this team and and, and just having so many guys be able to step into roles, contribute, and just keep this thing rolling? Um, I mean. You know, we prepare every day, you know, as if, you know, you plan no matter what, no matter the circumstances. So when we get into certain situations, you know, it's just next next man up mentality. So, um, you know, I'm just excited, you know, to be blessed with the opportunity to go out there and, and, and play and be able to contribute and help the team. And make the most of those opportunities, too. I mean, look at your game last week. Uh, sack, pass, defended. I think you had seven pressures. Um, you were all over the place. Just is, uh, You were playing some terrific ball right now. Do you kind of sense that, too? Do you feel like you're playing your best football right now? Absolutely. absolutely. But I always feel like it's, uh, it's room to get better. And, uh, you know, that's what I strive for every day when we go out there and practice, you know. So. Is your hype man part of that too? I know your 12 year old son. I know this has been a good story. You laugh. Um, Al Qadi Muhammad Jr., um, a defensive end and tight end, right? He's playing football himself. Yeah, yes. uh, 12 years old, but I heard he is quite the hype man for you. Yeah, now, tell me the story. That's that's my hype man. He calls me before <laughs> the game and he, uh, he he gives me a speech and stuff like that. And like I said in one of my interviews. It's so it's so funny that you know the things that you pour and it's still in your kids they spit it back at you, you know. <laughs> so it's just funny you know to, to to hear some of the things he tell me, but all the things he says is, is it true. seems to be working. Yeah, he yeah. must have had a good message there on Thanksgiving, right? right? Yeah, 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 he had a, good, a great message and stuff like that, and he, you know he said some things and you know you made for this and <laughs> this job. <laughs> And go out there and do this. I know you're gonna do this. I know you're gonna do that. So it's just it's it's fun, you know. It's definitely you know fun to have a a son um, that you know look up to you and want to do everything that you do. And you know, with that being said, he he also still you know want to pour into you know the things that I need to do and to be successful. So um, it's amazing. I love that. Yeah, I got I, mine. Seventeen plays hockey and baseball too. So just having that kid that's in that athletic right. realm, right? That you can speak that language with. That's right. that's something that's. Uh, it only gets better. Let me tell you, the older he gets, so uh, it'll be good. A Aaron Glenn and playing for for th this guy, former player, obviously. But I, he said something this week that I thought was terrific. He said it's not the scheme; it's the style of play. And and I just thought that resonated definitely with the way that you guys play on defense. What's it like playing for him and and. Um, how much do you do you appreciate the, the faith that not only him but this whole coach st staff has had in, in putting you in place and letting you just play your style of game? Well, Coach Glenn, I mean, he's he's a former player. He played his game for a long time, and uh, he's he's good at what he do. So he he gets it, you know. He 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 gets it. He he know what it's like to be out there. He understand the game on a different level. So um, yeah, I, I agree with him. You know. Um, it's it's the it's the style of play, you know, and no matter you know who's in there, the standard not changing. Mm. So, at the end of the day, you know, um, it's fun. I mean, I I love the message. I love the mentality. Um, I love this organization. I love I love the the locker room. The guys that we got in the locker room is is amazing. You know, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes that a lot of people don't know. You know, just to, we just have. You know, we have a great team, great people, great coaches, you know, and stuff like that. So, I mean, Coach Glenn is the type of guy that you, you want to go out there and uh, leave it all on the line for, you know. And that's that's all the coaches, you know. It's Coach T. Williams, it's Coach Campbell. I was going to ask you about you know, T. Williams, too, because he's a lot of guys have talked about the impact that he's had. On he's great. Too. He's great. I mean, he don't flinch. And, um, you know, he, he he he's the type of guy, type of man that – you, you want to come to work and you, you want to give also, you want to leave it all on the line, you know, um, for him, you know, and, you know, he prepares us and get us ready, you know, to, to, to be at our best to, to win a game. And he's calm. He's very chill. He's very calm. <laughs> you know, um, he gets it. He just know how to, he know how to deal with players and, um, He's, this has been awesome. You, I'm just I'm excited to just be on this type of team and just be a part of what we got going on, and uh, just 
be around the guys. I mean, that's from the head coach and all the coaches on. How much does being clo- guys being close, team uh, teammates being close, because I get the sense that, that this team is very close. How much does that – do you attribute that to winning too? Or, or how much do the two – coexist it's important it's a it's, it's important to to have a close team most importantly just unselfish guys and we have a very unselfish team you know um guys just go out there and work and play their behinds off and don't care who get the credit you know so when you have a team like that you know you could go far i mean i got here and you know um shout out to pascal he sit next to me in the meeting rooms and we talk ball all the time, and I ask questions and stuff like that. And um, you know, he he's always you know giving me great information. You know, it's it's not about me, it's not about him, it's about the team. Yeah. You know, and I could say that about you know so many other players that's in that locker room. That's a part of this thing. Even the you know just, just the coaches. You know, um, Coach Cam. You know, he's. He's always, you know, working with me on a lot of different stuff, and nobody knows that. And we meeting and we going over different information. You know, it's not about me; it's about the team. Yeah. You know, so that just says what type of people we got in this building. You know, so it's just I'm blessed and uh, I'm excited to to continue um, to take advantage of these opportunities that's before me. Well, you're certainly doing that, and and you seem like a, a great fit for for what they're doing here with your skill set. Uh, you're producing. This team keeps winning. Keep that up. Uh, Thursday night prime time in front of everybody. Uh, <laughs> we enjoy watching you you play. I certainly do. You're you're a big part of what they're doing right now. I appreciate you joining the podcast. Thank you. Welcome back to the Twenty the Huddle podcast. I am very w- happy to welcome in Mike Spofford. He does a great job uh, with the Packers. He is the editor of Packers.com. Mike, thanks for joining me. I appreciate you taking the time. Hey, you bet. Good to see you, Tim. Yeah, here we go again, right? The first or the second of two. It's the it's the first time the Lions have a, a division opponent for the second time. We obviously know what happened the first time. I think even you guys will be happy to be indoors this time around with the weather that we saw in Green Bay um, the first time. But Mike, as always, let, let's start here because injuries are always a great equalizer in this one. Where are the Packers health wise? Obviously, we know where the Lions are. They've suffered, you know, quite a few. But Jerry Alexander, some of the other guys there. Do you have any updates on? on what it's looking like injury wise for for Green Bay on Thursday? Yeah, the Packers are uh, are hoping to get uh, both Romeo Dobbs, the wide receiver, and Jair Alexander at corner uh, back from their recent injuries. Uh, Dobbs missed the uh, the la- Packers last game with a concussion. Alexander's been out for a bit uh, with a knee injury, and he uh, he missed the the first game against Detroit. He's been back at practice the first couple of uh, days. This week, uh, no guarantees there yet. Uh, we'll we'll see where things are, you know, come Thursday. But uh, but signs are are pointing in the direction that uh, that he's on the comeback trail, and and that would be a a big player to get back, um, considering uh, he missed that first matchup a month ago. Yeah, I mean he's their their best cornerback. He's one of the best cornerbacks in the league. Just just how does that change defensively for them having a guy like that? Is is it almost like you can forget about one side of the field and you can focus on the rest? I, that that that's a big uh, uh, advantage to have for a defense. Yeah, I don't know if I'd uh, I don't know if I'd quite put it like that. I guess I look at it with Alexander as he just gives he gives defensive coordinator Jeff Halfley more options. I I, mm. I think his his ability just allows. Halfley to maybe go to more man coverage calls and be able to just mix up the man and zone that much more because you can count on, uh, you know, Alexander in those man coverage calls. And, and then along those same lines, you can maybe get a little bit more creative with, with the pass rush and some of the pressure calls because you have that number one corner who's out there who can be so reliable for you. And, not to say that the Packers, you know, have completely changed their game plans or whatnot when Alexander has been out. They've certainly, you know, had some adjusting to do. Um, but uh, but anybody knows when when you've got a top flight cover corner, it doesn't just affect one part of the defense. It can affect a lot of stuff that's going on out there. And uh, And I think if the Packers can get him back and if he really is back to full strength, um, I, I just I see so much more variety, perhaps, in in what the Packers might try to do defensively against a, a Lions offense that's obviously been pretty tough to stop all year. 
No, it's a great point by you because the Lions are, are kind of in the same deal with Carlton Davis. You know, he's returned to practice early in the week, kind of up in the air with him and, the, and that knee injury. And, and having him certainly changes, you know, what Aaron Glenn can do and just the different kinds of coverages and, and, and um, stuff like that you can play. So so good point by you. I want to stick with, with that defense for a little bit with the Packers. Yeah, Obviously, you look at the offense. They've been humming along 30-plus points in their last two games against San Francisco and Miami. And look, I know San Francisco and Miami aren't what we thought they would be at the beginning of the year. But I think when you hold NFL teams, I think, to 83 combined rushing yards in those t- two games, that Green Bay defense is, is playing much better football. They, they seem to me watching them, they're a much more physical brand of football. They're playing really on both sides of the ball. But look, you know Detroit's going to want to come in with, with Sonic and Knuckles and run the football. They average 150 yards on the ground and 4.8 per carry. How big has that improvement been for Green Bay's defense that, that they're really stepping up and stopping the run of late? Yeah, they really feel like the run defense has made some major strides. And Matt LaFleur has talked about the the physicality overall of the team has, uh, you know, has sort of ratcheted up a little bit. Um, you know, Packers have had their issues against the run in the past, uh, you know, even though the Lions didn't put up a ton of points when they came in here to Lambeau. But, you know, that that one two punch Montgomery and, and Gibbs, those guys averaged about five yards a carry in that game. And then uh, when the Packers went to Chicago after the bye week, DeAndre Swift busted a, you know, 40 yard touchdown run on a toss sweep and they were not happy with uh, where their run defense was at. Well, since then they went up against McCaffrey um, for the 49ers, held him to 31 yards on 11 carries, really solid effort there. And then against Miami, their one, two punch of, of a Chan and Mostert, you know, those guys only had, you know, about 40 some yards on, you know, I can't remember exactly the number, but, you know, 15, 16 combined carries, something like that. So um, the strides made are definitely there. You've seen it statistically and and what they've done against uh, against some backs that can really run the ball. And they know they've got a huge challenge um, with uh, that that backfield of Detroit, but they feel like they're trending in the right direction to uh, to maybe be able to clamp down on them a little bit more than they did the first time. Yeah, on the other side of the football, Jordan Love playing some pretty good ball of, of late, too. That first matchup in Week 9, Mike, you know, he wasn't 100% there. I think there were even some issues if he was going to play in that game. Um, you know, they I think they were coming – they had their bye the following week, so there, there was some discussion there. Um, he looks like he's moving around much better. Just how different is he when you've got that element – to his game when he can run, extend plays, get out of the pocket a little bit, because obviously you guys can throw the football deep. I mean, that, that, you know, that's been evident all year, but when your quarterback can extend that, get out of the pocket and, and, and just overall has more strength in that leg. How big of a difference has that made? Yeah, that, that mobility is huge in, in a number of ways, not only to, uh, to be able to get out of the pocket, you know, where Jordan love can be, you know, dangerous at times and, and in extending those plays, but just also in the the um, you know maybe maybe wider variety of uh, of what Matt Lafleur wants to call on offense in terms of being under center as well as in shotgun and doing some different things that way. When uh, the Packers and Lions met the first time, Love had uh, had injured the groin muscle um, the previous week at Jacksonville. He had missed the second half of that game. He really hadn't practiced uh, for the bulk of the week leading up to the Lions game. But they felt he was good to go. They, you know, wanted to play, um, wanted to play him in in the big division matchup. Um, but there were definitely some limitations to uh, to what he could do. You know, not being fully mobile and and you know how you take the snaps under center and all that. Um, Jordan Love is is looking just physically right now the best he's looked all season because you go back to week one in Brazil against the Eagles and he uh, he had the knee injury coming out of there. He missed right. a couple of games. And then was uh, was you know not a hundred percent when he first came back from that, and that was uh, you know unfortunately the, his first came back from the knee injury earlier in the year was when the Packers played the Vikings and they lost that game you know a, a division matchup there. So um, Love feels really good about where he is physically, and I think he's physically in the best spot he's been uh, probably since uh, before that knee injury way back in week one. Yeah, you know, another guy who's in a pretty good spot is Josh Jacobs right now. I mean, he seems like such a perfect fit, Mike, for for what Matt LaFleur wants to do in that offense. And and when you watch them, it, it, it's crazy. It, it, is, it, is it safe to say that this offense kind of runs through Josh Jacobs now and everything is better for it versus 
earlier in the year, this was a passing attack. It's downfield. But now it looks like this is Josh Jacobs first and foremost. At least that's how Aaron Glenn, the defensive coordinator for the Lions, described it this week talking about it. Yeah, I think that's pretty accurate. Uh, the, the Packers really, they've, they've kind of taken the approach here of wanting to uh, wanting to establish something with Jacobs and have Jacobs really be the tone setter for the offense uh, as opposed to, you know, maybe the, the more, you know, traditional Aaron Rodgers, Jordan Love type of offense that uh, that we've seen over the years. Jacobs has just been a workhorse. Uh, and, um, you know, the, the, pa- the Packers like, now it won't be, you know, playing indoors as opposed to outdoors in the cold these last couple of games where, you know, you could see the 49ers and the Dolphins weren't entirely interested in tackling Josh Jacobs when it's 20 <laughs> degrees outside, you know. Um, so that uh, that sort of uh, mentality, you know, disappears when you go inside Ford Field on Thursday night. But uh, but Jacobs in this ground game has definitely been the tone setter for Green Bay's offense. And then everything when things are going well, everything is building off of that with the play action and uh, um, and with Jordan Love getting time in the pocket to uh, to look downfield. And uh, and the Packers are using Jacobs as a receiver out of the backfield as well. He had a huge play. Um, against the Dolphins on just a, you know, a, a swing pass that he ends up making a great move in the open field and takes 49 yards um, to get the Packers in position for points. So uh, um, he's n- number eight, uh, a huge free agent addition and, uh, and very quickly uh, a huge, huge part of Green Bay's offense. I got a couple more from Mike Spofford, the editor at Packers.com. Does a great job over there. The Packers view this as a, as a must win kind of game. Mike, I know there's still, you know, four games after this, but with Detroit sitting 11-1 with, um, you know, Minnesota at 10-2, at and two, getting to four losses might be tough. Do, do they view this as kind of, hey, we're, we're in must-win territory as the calendar flips to December? I think there's no secret that if, uh, if the Packers want to be able to win the NFC North and, and come out on top in this, uh, um, you know, this – really competitive three horse race that they've got to win this one. Um, if, uh, if you lose this one Thursday night in Detroit, you know, then realistically you're, you're looking at a wild card for the playoffs and, and trying to put yourself in the best position there. Packers feel like if they, if they win this one, you know, stay at three losses, hand Detroit loss number two with still a month left to go in the regular season. Um, it's uh, it, it becomes anybody's, anybody's North, uh, anybody's NFC North to, to win but uh, but yeah, I mean, you you, lo- you lose this one and you fall three games behind the Lions with uh, with just a month to go. It's it's just not realistic to think that you can uh, win the division. All right, last one. The Packers, you know, come east. They come to Detroit Thursday night prime time and they get a win in Ford Field. If what happens, what what's the biggest key for you, Mike, for, for the Packers to to kind of come out of Ford Field, even this thing up on the year, and and uh, and get a big win. I, th- I think it's really the, you know, the, the formula that the Packers have used to, to get on this, this winning streak here since they last lost to Detroit. They've, they've cut down on the turnovers. The Packers have only turned the ball over once in their last three games, um, and turnovers have been an issue earlier in the season. So you have to continue to limit those. You have to continue to convert in the red zone and get touchdowns when you get in close. After that Lions game the first time, the Packers were 29th in the league in red zone offense. Since then, the last three games, the Packers have converted 11 out of 15 red zone possessions into touchdowns. They've climbed 11 spots in the red zone offense rankings just over the last three games. So that's another thing they uh, um, that's another thing they've been doing well. And then defensively, it's been about limiting the explosive plays. The Packers know all about what kind of a home run hitter Jameer Gibbs is, how dangerous guys like Laporta and and St. Brown are with Goff in the passing game. The Packers are going to try to make the Lions, you know, take the long, slow slog down the field and not try to give up the big chunks of the field and try to force them a force a mistake. You start giving up the the 20, 25 yard chunk plays becomes a lot harder for the defense to get off the field and limiting those explosives against the Niners, against the Dolphins. um, That was uh, that was a big part of those point totals uh, for those opposing teams being down to where uh, the Packers like their efforts. So. All of those things, uh, it, it's a lot to ask for, right? But all of those things are what will go into the Packers getting this victory if they can put it all together. 
Well, it should be a fun one. One loss, Detroit. Three lost, uh, 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 Green Bay. Two guys. There are two teams fighting for the, the division title and, and obviously their playoff lives on prime time. Uh, it should be fun. Kicks off week 14. It, is it crazy that we're already in week 14, Mike? Yeah, man, it's it's nuts, right? <laughs> I mean, I was I was talking about week one in Brazil, and that does not feel like it was uh, it was that long ago. But yeah, here we are. <laughs> well, here we are. It should be a fun one. Thank you so much for joining me. Safe travels uh, to Detroit, and I'll make sure I stop by and say hello. Yeah, sounds good. We'll see you Thursday, Tim. <laughs>